All right, good evening, everybody. I've got 501, so we'll go ahead and call this meeting of the North Middlesex Regional School District School Committee to order for Thursday, August 17th, 2023. Uh, just a reminder to the committee and uh, attendees that this meeting is being recorded. I'll do a roll call. Um, Dave? Here. Jessica? Here. June? Here. Lisa B? Lisa B is connecting to audio. But I see her. Um, Lisa M? Here. Randy? And I don't see Susan, I don't see Tom, and Lisa B, you're connected to audio now, you can hear us? Yeah, can you yeah. hear me? We can. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Um, and I'm here, so that is, uh, that's where we are. Our next scheduled meeting will be held at 6 p.m. on Thursday, September 21st. Uh, first order of business is the consent agenda. We have approval of minutes from June 29th and July 27th, as well as accounts payable warrants and two donations, uh, $1,000 from the Nissetisset PTO and uh, 78 to uh, Ashby from the Hannaford Community Bag Program. So moved. Second. Oops. June and Randy, thank you. Uh, David? Yes. Jessica? Yes. June? Yes. Lisa B? Yes. Lisa M? Yes. Randy? Yes. And I will vote yes. So that is unanimous. Thank you. Um, next, we have public communications. I'm just confirming. I don't believe I saw anybody. No. All right. So we had nobody um, request to speak tonight. Uh, so moving on to reports, uh, Superintendent Morgan. Sure. Can you hear me okay? We can. Okay. Just, I just wanted to let the committee know that we held our admin institute Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday this week. Um, all district and building admin attended and some highlights included. We had a very competitive, competitive charcuterie board contest, which uh, certainly helped to build some culture. We had some fun with that. Uh, we did some trainings on bullying, Title IX, harassment, Edival, the new IEP, and Alice uh, crisis planning and reaction um, to two crises within the buildings. We discussed the final year of the strategic plan and laid out a plan on how to attain our remaining goals. All of our in-district, uh, or excuse me, building-based administration set SMART goals for the year. We went over this year's professional development plan and how to promote leadership from within the district. We rolled out a new mandated training program for our staff. And then finally, we discussed the proposed vision and mission and how we could use those as the foundation for creating core values and our portrait of a graduate for the district moving forward for this year. And overall, I have to say it was really a great three days, very excited with the team that we have in place and could not be happy with the thoughtful collaboration and energy that everyone brought to the table. So just wanted to recognize that. And for the September meeting, we will be bringing forward retirees, new hires, and our 25-year award. So I just wanted to let the committee know that we're still working on that, and hiring is still fluid. So we just want to make sure that we have a complete list. Uh, we do have something ready to go this evening, but I thought it would be best just to wait until we have as complete a list as possible, especially with the new hires. Excellent. Any questions for the superintendent? Um, Brian, I know there was a, an email about the uh, ses sessions with Vanpool today. Do we have an update on that and how those went or just a brief? Um, yeah, so so I did speak with Brad Brooks. I did not speak with him after the afternoon session. Unfortunately, we did not have, and I'm sure that the committee members have heard, we have had an awful lot of complaints with Vanpool. Um, and I will say that Vanpool um, provided both an in-person meeting today um, where they sent a team of people uh, to attend and anyone was able to go and attend that. And it was uh, it was publicized uh, throughout the district to make sure the families knew that as a Vanpool families anyway, I should say. Uh, and then they held an afternoon session. 
at last count, there were three, uh, three people on the afternoon session, and we did not have a single attendee at the morning session this morning, which is very unfortunate. Uh, again, just with the, with the complaints that we have received uh, and to provide that opportunity, uh, it, was, it was not as well attended as we thought it was going to be. So it's unfortunate. Hopefully, the, the three um, families that went today found it to be beneficial. Uh, it's a challenge, uh, you know. Certainly, when you look at Van Pool, the, there were errors made. But the issue is, is that we really don't have uh, any other options. I'm sure the school committee has seen what has happened with, um, you know, drivers elsewhere with um, with UPS and elsewhere. It's very, very difficult to find drivers, and it's it's a difficult job, uh, and the candidate pool is very thin. And there simply just aren't enough drivers out there and there aren't enough vendors. So we certainly look, we thought we had, um, you know, some, an opportunity this year to potentially have other vendors help us out. And neither one of those vendors um, ended up coming to the table. So Vanpool will be providing us again, at least for the foreseeable future, 2023, 2024, with our special education transportation. And I you know, feel confident that they're gonna do the best that they can. But again, having a, a reliable workforce has been a challenge. Thank you, Brad, I appreciate that update and appreciate uh, getting the ses sessions organized and um, hopefully uh, those that attended did get uh, some value out of that. So I appreciate that. Uh, Dave, you had a question and then June. Um, yeah, uh, Superintendent Morgan, have we heard anything from our state level representatives or senators with regards to um, either looking into or investigating now we don't have other options for buses? So I, I think I shared with the, the with the committee back probably back in the fall it, it is on the audit the state auditor's docket uh, but they will not provide me with an update as to um, where it stands all that they will tell me is that it is being looked into but they won't tell me when a decision is going to be made uh, i know i've shared with the committee before that um that all districts are facing this um you know the the bidding process for uh, public school transportation is is, is significantly flawed, uh, and it is something that if the state stepped in and took it over, it would be it would eliminate um, a lot of the issues that we have. But with where they're not stepping in and providing at least some more direction, that's allowing uh, the transportation companies to essentially do as they please. And as far as I'm concerned, cut side deals to make sure that um, other districts or other companies are not bidding against each other in districts so that they can maintain their business. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Jim? Um, I just had a quick comment since um, new staff was mentioned, and I just wanted to say that I noticed all the announcements um, from Hawthorne Brook on social media. And I think that's awesome. So I don't know if all the schools are doing it, but I just wanted to shout out to the, the people behind the scenes that are making those announcements and communicating that to the public, because I I think that's great for the kids to kind of meet their teachers ahead of time. And they're doing a, Hawthorne Brook is doing a great job. Um, like I said, I don't know about all the schools, but I think it's awesome. So I just wanted to mention that. Thank you, June. I will pass that along. Thank you, June. Uh, Lisa, Lisa B. Hi, um, I just have a quick question, Dave, because um, with the buses and stuff, is that all from last year before I came on the school committee? Just to kind of like... So the, um, the, the bus issue has been has been really going on for a couple of, for, I would say at this point, probably two decades. Okay. So it's it's been a long standing issue. Um, and unfortunately, again, at this point, the state has not stepped in. It is on the auditor's docket. That's who I was told to call. Uh, I did speak to the pre previous state auditor, uh, Auditor Bump, and uh, she did provide me with the information that, again, it's 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 on the docket, but it's not something, it, it clearly, I, I don't think it's something that's at the top of their list right now because uh, it, it has been well over a year since I've spoken to the state auditor. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lisa. Susan? 
You're muted, Susan. Oops, I was muted. Okay, I'm afraid of that. Um, I went to the um, auditor uh, when um, Margaret Scarsdale and the auditor uh, came to Pepperell. And yeah, I think early on, before we even got really uh, moving, they were already mentioning that. Uh, they were very aware of that, and they had some things I, um, they were looking into. We brainstormed a few more things, um, some of them more feasible than others, but uh, they're they're very aware of it. Both um, both offices, um, Scarsdale and the and the new auditor, and they're hearing it from other districts, so it's not just us. Thank you, Susan. Um, Superintendent, anything else on your side? That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I guess just from, a, I guess, a chairperson perspective, just um, as this is our last meeting before the school year starts, I've I've popped into to NISA TISIT a couple times um, to help with some things and, and the staff preparing the building and getting it all cleaned up and the floors polished and waxed and Things moved around. I've been doing a fantastic job cleaning up the gardens out front, mowing the lawns, all that stuff. So, um, building looks great. I'm, I'm assuming all the other buildings uh, look just as nice. So, uh, just kudos to the staff that's been uh, working their butts off to get uh, everything cleaned up and ready for the new students coming in. So, definitely appreciate that. Um, moving on to new business, we have uh, two out-of-state travel requests from Hawthorne Brook and Nissa Tissett. And I believe Miss Young is on. There she is. Yeah. Good Hi, evening. everybody. Hello. Hi. So I'm here on behalf of Hawthorne Brook and Nissa Tissett um, asking for approval for our eighth graders to go to Washington, D.C. again this year. Um, last year was the first year we brought it back after COVID and it went really well. So we were really excited about that and we're looking to have the trip take place again this spring. Um, Hawthorne Brook would go in April and Miss Atissa would go in May. Um, and that helps the nursing coverage so that we're not gone at the same time. Um, the cost of the trip this year is about $900. And um, there are scholarships available for families who aren't able to, to pay that much. No student should not, every student will go if they want to go. Um, through our PTOs and the business association, you know, we have uh, means to help families that need it. Um, so I'm happy to take any questions. Randy? Um, what is the participation uh, looking like? I mean, or, or do you anticipate? Um, I know it's been dropping over the years um, because of the <clears throat> The sixth grade trip, or we're going to be doing a sixth grade, but I know it's going to cost the eighth grade. Yeah. So I didn't know um, if you got any feedback at all. I know it's kind of early. Yeah. Um, well, last year, um, both schools had about 25 students out of a class size of about 135 who didn't go on the trip. And those were families, most of the students didn't feel comfortable leaving home um, or the families were choosing to do something else that week. Um, so, you know, there, and that's always been the case. I would say there's always 25 students or so out of a class who choose not to attend. The class sizes are getting a little bit smaller than they used to be too. So I think the percentage is about the same. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Jim? Um, I just wanted to say that although the cost is a little tough to swallow, we finally had an eighth grader be able to attend because it was a, a non-COVID year and it was an amazing experience and I heard about it for weeks and it was well worth it. So I'm, I'm really glad that it has started up again. So that's, that's really great to hear. It's four days and it's jam packed. I mean, they don't stop for a minute. So it's nice to hear that they really enjoyed it. Thank you. All right, any other questions or comments? <laughs> All right, if not, then I will uh, take a motion for the school committee to approve the eighth grade students enrolled in Nissa Tissett Middle School 
to travel to Washington, D.C. from May 21 to May 24, 2024, and eighth grade students enrolled in the Hawthorne Brook Middle School to travel to Washington, D.C. from April 9 to April 12, 2024, to study grade eight civics curriculum. So moved. Second. Lisa, or June, sorry. Any other questions or comments? All right, David? Yes. Jessica? Yes. June? Yes. Lisa B? Yes. Lisa M? Yes. Randy? Yes. Susan? Yes. And I will vote yes, so that is unanimous. Thank you, and uh, thank you, Principal Young, appreciate it. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. Uh, next up is the vision and uh, mission statements, and I'm just promoting folks to talk. All right. Chairman, just while you're doing that, I just want to let the committee know that that um, Ms. Jake is going to be presenting this. She's the principal at the Spalding Memorial School, and she was uh, the chair of a committee that was pretty well uh, pretty well re represented in the district that looked at our our previous vision and mission and whether or not that needed to be tended to just based on um you know several years of having that in place especially as we're getting ready to put forth a new five-year plan so uh, it is something that the school committee um should be approving, so um, or should be voting on. I should say, uh, not necessarily approving, but it is something that the committee should vote on, and uh, something that the committee um, would certainly need the committee support in order to move forward on this. So I just have Miss Kajaker again, where she was uh, the chairperson of this committee here to present those two items this evening. Hi everyone. Um, so I was very fortunate to. Um, co-chair this committee with Jason Webster. Um, we were worked with an amazing group of people. It was school committee members, parents, students, and teachers and other administrators in the district. And it was really a really great experience, which is why I say I was fortunate to do it because um, we don't often get to interact at that close level with so many people. Um, and working on an initiative like this, it was really kind of exciting. When we first started, it was, we thought we were gonna be just looking at core values as we were getting ready to start moving into our next strategic plan. But before we could look at the core values, we took a step back and as a committee agreed that we should probably tackle the vision statement and the mission statement first, because that's really where your core values come from. Um, so we started with our vision. Do you guys need me to post it? I think you all have it in your agenda, right? Or do you need me to post it? Okay, so we started with the vision statement. Um, which you have in front of you, which is kind of exciting. It's where we want to see the kids go, um, the end result, basically, um, our end product, if you will. And then the mission is what are we as the adults going to do to see that happen? And then the next step is going to be what are we going to be looking for or asking for out of our students? And that makes up our core values. Um, the process that we're going to be doing is if the vision and mission are, you know, approved we're, or voted on. Um, we will be working at the grade level to work together for the core values. So like all the elementary admin and staff will be working on the elementary core values. And then the two middle schools will, and that will feed into the high school. And then we'll all come together to make sure that as a district, each one makes sense leading into the next so that it reflects again, the portrait of a graduate and what we want our learners to um, come away with in the end. That's it right there. Thank you. Any questions from the committee? All right. Then if there are no questions, um, I will take a motion to approve the updated vision and mission statements for uh, North Middlesex Regional School District as presented. So move. Oh. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions, comments, last chance? Right. I'm sorry. Who did you have for for um, moving and seconding on that? Everybody kind of. I heard David <laughs> twice, so. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, you or Randy or? Yeah, Randy. that was me. Right. 
Okay. Um, uh, we'll do sorry. Randy and David. Randy, then Dave. Okay, sure. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Dave had the last one, so we'll give him the second on this one. Gotcha. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, so uh, this is to approve the vision and mission statements. David? Yes. Jessica? Yes. June? Yes. Lisa B? Yes. Lisa M? Yes. Randy? Yes. Susan? Yes. And I will vote yes, so that is unanimous. Uh, nice work to the, to the committee and the group that put this together. I really appreciate it, and uh, it's good to go. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Kajaga. Yeah. Did All you right. have a question for me, Susan? Yes. Did you have a question? Uh, I just wanted to make a quick comment. I was waiting for Craig to call on me. <laughs> sure, go ahead. The, um, I just wanted to say uh, thank you for putting this together. I know it's very difficult to get that many people to agree on this many words, <laughs> um, especially something as... Um, I can't find the right word, but uh, but thank you for putting this together. I think it would be something that um, can't be argued with. Yeah. It would appeal to a broad range of people. So thank you. No, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Have a good night, everyone. Thanks, too. Good night. All right. Next up, we have the handbook addendum, uh, Superintendent Morgan. Yeah, so back uh, back when I first started, uh, it was recommended by legal counsel that certain aspects of the handbook be removed and be be turned into what legal counsel calls an addendum. And it's basically our discrimination policy, our harassment policy, um, selected school committee policies, which, again, are, were selected by legal counsel just based on what other districts were doing. And they tend to be the most um, looked at, I would say, or, the, or some of the more significant policies. And then um, some of the more significant mass general laws around student discipline. So all of this is essentially has been approved by our legal counsel. It is something that is um, considered an add on to the handbook and will be put at the end of the handbook. Um, so it'll be in the physical handbook on the website, but it will also be shown as an addendum again so that it's seen in a couple of different places. Uh, but I think what the school committee really needs to weigh in on, unless uh, committee members feel differently, is are the school committee policies that are listed and that have been recommended by legal counsel, are those the ones that the school committee is happy with? Um, ag again, the anti-discrimination, um, sexual harassment, Title IX, and the Mass General Laws, those are all things that have to be in the addendum. Um, and I would recommend that we keep the policies in there that legal counsel has recommended. But are there any policies that maybe the school committee wants to add that aren't there? Again, the handbook states very clearly now up front that our school committee policy can be found here. There's a live link um, so that they're able to access the policy manual just with a click now on, on all three handbooks. So I'm not sure if we want to add more to it. I, I do find it to be um personally i feel like it's i don't think many people look at our addendum uh but especially from the uh, anti-discrimination title nine and harassment standpoint as well as the mass general laws those are things that have to be in there just to cover the district but the policies are mentioned in multiple spots in the handbooks so again just this is more or less is this something that the committee wants to approve as is or is this something that the committee would like to see um, are there policies you're not happy with, which again, I would just remind that legal counsel feels these policies need to be in there, um, or are there policies that are being neglected that should be in there? Um, I just have a question around putting the actual policy in here versus just a link to the policy as these get updated. Is, is there a recommendation from legal to have the actual text of the policy, which also makes this a very long document versus maybe just a list of the relevant policies with a link they could click to view the most updated version? No, I, I honestly think that we probably could go with a link okay. uh, because, again, that would eliminate several pages. 
Um, and again, generally speaking, if parents have a question with a policy, they're reaching out to the school or they're reaching out to central office and we're directing them to that specific policy so that they're able to see it. And we'll generally discuss it with um, a parent or community member if they call. We'll bring the policy up and we'll give them the information. We'll direct them on how to access it and then we'll talk about it. Um, so we try to be as transparent and as um, as helpful as we possibly can when it comes to policy. Um, so I, I honestly, I would prefer to, to make this document a bit shorter if we can. And I think just having the link, all people have to do again is, is click on it because it'll be a live link. So we can certainly do that and make it a little bit more manageable as far as the length goes. Okay, that would, that would be my recommendation is anywhere okay. there's policies to, to list it and link to it and not have to worry about making this updated and also having it be too long for people. Okay. Randy? Uh, yeah, I, I would agree with that. As long as uh, we're not filing anything that uh, legal is telling us otherwise, I think a link is uh, is quite suitable uh, to have here with the title of the policy so they know what we're directing them to and then uh, the link uh, for the live up-to-date version. Great. Thank you. The committee does have to approve the addendum. Yes. Yep. Any other um, questions or comments from the committee or any policies they feel should be out of here that aren't already in this document? <clears throat> All right. Seeing none, then I will uh, take a motion to um, approve the handbook addendum um, with the change of uh, linking to the most recent version of policies where appropriate versus the actual full policy itself. So moved. Second. All right, Randy and Lisa. Lisa. All right, any other questions, comments? Okay, David? Yes, Craig. Jessica? Yes, Craig. <laughs> June? Yes, Mr. Hanson. There we go. <laughs> Lisa B? Yes, Craig. <laughs> Lisa M? Yes. Randy? I'll continue with yes, Craig. <laughs> Susan? Yes, Chairman Hansen. There we go. One person got it right. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> and I will vote yes as well. Uh, so that is unanimous. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Um, moving on to subcommittee reports. Uh, Lisa, do we have anything from Accelerator Repair? Is that still open? Um, we actually approved a warrant. Yeah. The last warrant was done. And so that's passing through. And so... We'll see when we can close this out soon. Good. Um, the Ashby uh, Building Committee, June? Uh, next meeting is September 5th. Excellent. Um, we don't have a, Tom's not on for communications finance, Lisa. Nothing from finance, but Brad does have a meeting the 28th with town leaders. Excellent. Is that like an official budget summit kickoff? Yes. Yes. Excellent. I expect lots of good news, Brad. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do what I can. Good. <laughs> um, negotiations and personnel, Lisa or Dave? Um, so we are starting to uh, gear up and set some dates uh, with regards to negotiations, but um uh, nothing has been planned just yet, but uh, we are looking at September. Okay. Thank you. Policy, Randy? Uh, nothing right now. I apologize. It's been kind of a wild uh, summer. <laughs> Every time I thought I had time, well, that went away. 
<laughs> um, so I will be uh, doubling down when the kids all go to college. Uh, so the beginning of September, I should have plenty of time uh, to dedicate and get this uh, rolling again. And are we, from a regional agreement perspective, is do, do we have everything we needed back from? No, I haven't heard back. We had <laughs> um, sent in to the DESC. I need to check in on them. They're supposed to get back to us with the language for um, the change in school committee um, uh, representation and mm -hmm. the plan and, and to approve the plan that we had to uh, go to that. And I have not heard anything back from them. Okay. Thank you. Um, any of our liaisons, June, Dave, or Jessica, updates, information? Um, I have a quick update. Mary Calandrella resigned. So um, the one of the select board positions is currently open and the election will be beginning of October. So I'll have more of an update after that. But I do know that several people pulled papers, so it should be interesting. Very interesting. All right. Any um, any other questions, comments on uh, subcommittees or liaisons? Any urgent business from anybody? All right, this will be a this will be a quick one. Oh, Lisa B, you're uh, muted. We can't hear you. Sorry, sorry. Um, I did um, message Brad um, in regards to doing the um, MASC workshop. And he got back to me on the one date, as well as the 14th we had talked about doing, possibly. But he's got um, there's other commitments going on. So we just kind of get get maybe some of other available dates that all of us, you know, have that can work together. And then we can call the MASC Dorothy Press or just schedule it. Okay. Excellent. So, but Randy and I will stay on top of it. I appreciate that. That's good. Okay. Thank you. June, do you have a question? Uh, no question and nothing no. urgent, but I just wanted to say thank you to everybody for the flexibility on the time change today. So, it's important to me to go to high school orientation. So Yes. Whoever's yeah. going to that, enjoy. Absolutely. And good luck. <laughs> All right. Um, with that, um, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. Um, David? Yes, Chairman Hanson. Jessica? Yes, Chairman. June? Yes, Chairman. Lisa B? Yes, Chairman. Lisa M? Yes. Randy? Yes, sir. <laughs> Susan's not going to vote. See. There you see. <laughs> I'm going to vote no. No, I'm just kidding. I will vote yes. Uh, someone's going to watch that last clip of the meeting and think we're so formal. Um, but I uh, appreciate it. Appreciate the time, everybody. Enjoy the rest of summer. We'll talk in a few weeks. And um, that's it. Meeting adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Okay.